Building and competing on BattleBots is a dream come true for a lot of the team here, but hope was cut short after we stepped into the ring against a veteran team. Oh Tens of thousands of dollars and thousands of hours of labor, and it all went up in flames. Our first BattleBots fight didn't exactly go to plan. But the real question is, do we double down and keep going? Well, unless you're new here at Hacksmith Industries, we don't give up. So we are redesigning, rebuilding, and going back to Las Vegas to fight another vertical spinner bot called Disarray. But what went wrong with the first Orbitron, and what exactly happened? Well, a lot of things, and they all compounded in the worst way, which is usually what happens in highly competitive technical competitions, especially ones where you can't test or practice in the actual arena ahead of time. First up, we had controller issues. Our controller disconnected mid-fight. We might have even won the first round if that hadn't happened. To fix this, we can add some redundancy to the system. The second problem we had was our weapon spin-up time was pretty slow, and with limited time for testing, we weren't able to fine-tune the speed controllers well enough to be able to spin the weapons fast enough for the fight. This is huge for getting hits in and being maneuverable. And you only get max impact energy at max speed. So with a bit more fine-tuning, we should be able to get those weapons spinning way faster. Serviceability. Our design had way too many bolts. The amount of screws that you guys have on your, on your lid, like, if it burns, it's gonna burn. We're not gonna go in there and save it. And not the greatest wire management, which slows down repairs and even prevents saving the bot if it catches fire. It's gonna burn. We're not gonna go in there and save it. So we're gonna redesign some of the mechanical system and use less bolts. And one of the biggest gut punches, we didn't actually have AI for either of those fights because when we calibrated for the arena, it didn't really work out in the time we had. And as such, we had no AI actually helping us, which is the whole point of Orbitron, Orbit Tron. When the AI is working, you can hold one button to orbit and press another to go in for the kill, all while still having full manual control and override. Luckily, we'll be able to use training data from our matches that we already had to calibrate the AI to make it work. And perhaps the biggest issue, this doesn't seem like AR-500. The weapon chipped way too easily. So we hired a guy from Qualitest to material test these parts with an XRF machine. And as it turns out, this isn't AR-500. That's kind of like going into a boxing match against a bare knuckle fighter using gloves. If we just use real AR-500, we're gonna pack a way harder punch. I think the team has their work cut out for them, but I made a few calls and I think we might just have a secret weapon. I've partnered us up with ShredTech, a local but international company that makes industrial shredders. They manufacture real AR-500 blades capable of shredding pretty much anything. To be honest, I'm surprised BattleBot teams haven't already partnered with a company like this. It just makes sense. One of their standard shredding blades was almost a drop-in replacement for our weapon, but we ended up co-designing a new weapon with their engineers over the next month. Our new weapons are going to be indestructible. Biggest difference with these is they're actually AR-500 this time. We have a bar instead of two discs. The bar lets us save a bunch of weight, letting us put more weight in armor, so our robot is gonna be a lot more survivable throughout the match. And the disc, the disc doesn't have these through cutouts, meaning that it weighs more, but the weight is a lot closer to the outside, and the whole disc is a lot stronger, a lot stiffer actually. What did he say? So on the previous one, we had a, it was a circular profile, and then we had the tooth kind of jutting out from there. This is a full spiral, starting from the root of the tooth all the way out around, continuing to increase radius all the way to the tip. So the tip has a lot more geometry supporting it, a lot more material behind the tip, so that we shouldn't be removing the tip or deforming the tip all that much. A couple nice things about the bar. We have two teeth on it, so we have one tooth, two teeth. So if one side gets all beat up, we can just kind of flip it over, mount it on the other way, and have another tooth ready to go. And when we're fighting against a horizontal spinner, there's a lot more area missing. So we are a lot less likely to have a weapon-on-weapon -weapon impact that's going to damage our weapon or the rest of the robot. 
To speed up manufacturing, we're using our brand new Avid CNC router so we can fabricate our frame in-house. And it makes quick work out of this three-quarter inch aluminum. So we have Peter, Matthew working on electronics. We have Adam working on drivetrain. Steven is assembling, I think, the self-writer arm right now. Parts of the self-writer and all the bent aluminum pieces were kindly donated by DemTool. Everybody has stuff to do. We've got to get a robot together and at this point, we're fighting in a month. Okay, so we're currently battle hardening our electronic speed controllers. Last time in the second fight, we took a pretty big hit and the vibration of that, we think, caused some of the components to dislodge in the speed controller and then catch on fire. Basically, we're covering these in potting compound. It's like a hard rubber epoxy, which is gonna shock mount everything and make sure that none of the components break down or get loose or uh, suffer a lot of shock when we take hits. So all the components that could be fragile and could break and take impacts, we're making them even stronger and even more resilient. This BattleBot is a pretty complicated build. Of course it is! But some things, like websites, should just be simple to make. So what if I told you you can make an entire website in just a few minutes with this video's sponsor, Odoo? Tell me more! To start, click my link and create a free account. Pick one of the creative themes, choose a color palette, or upload a logo. Add in features and pages. I'm gonna set up mine as an e-commerce site and add all of our BattleBot products. Then, you can let AI generate the text for you and watch as the system creates your website automatically. Wow! It really is that easy. But the best part is, Odoo isn't just for building websites. It's a full suite of business management tools. It can replace dozens of other business functions all in one place. And your first application is free for life. Yes! Simply click the link in the video description below to try Odoo out for free. And you'll get lifetime support, unlimited hosting, and a custom domain name for one year. Big thank you to Odoo for sponsoring this video. We just got some metal 3D printed parts from PCBWay, so let's uh, check them out. So, I'm just showing them like either. So. Nice. Wow. Uh, new wheel course. This is our armor configuration for fighting a vertical spinner, which we are this time, so we have the right armor. It's a good start. Big things we changed was we went from AR400 316s to a quarter inch AR500. So we're about 25, a little more than 25% thicker, uh, and we're way stronger material for these kinds of impacts. The other big difference is we've made this bend have a nice loose radius so that it's not gonna snap at that point like the last bit of armor did. We've prepared this time, yes. Because last time, what was our, our armor configuration was? It was very, very similar to this, optimized for a vertical spinner. And I don't know if you remember, but Roundhouse is not a vertical spinner. We've got a horizontal spinner versus two vertical spinners. It's simpler, it's easier to make. We make it in-house this time. Bogdan, you know all about making it in-house, don't you? Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna try to get this bend to be 60.84 degrees, as uh, Stephen requested. So, we got an AR500 to cut out. Awesome. I attempted to bend them. Oh, you, oh. It's heat. You uh, just gotta heat it up. But it, so how does that affect the, um, the hardness of it? If it cools naturally, it shouldn't be too much. You did it! Bogdan didn't break this time. Good yeah. job. You know, how straight it is or how centered it is, but that looks like a pretty good curvature. 
If you guys love Orbitron and want to help support the team, we just launched some very limited edition products. We've got some really cool scale models of Orbitron that you can buy or just 3D print yourself, a team jersey, and even one-on-one -on -one calls with the team. These products are only going to be available until April 4th. And stick around to the end of the video to learn how you could save 20% off these new products too. Robot should be on. Okay. Can we move this? Since the robot drivetrain is a little different on this one, we have slightly different gearboxes, gear ratios, and new motors. We gotta retune all of our orbit code. So that's what Peter's doing right now. We're gonna just getting a preliminary tune so that we have more to work off of. We've tuned a lot of parameters on the speed controller, and with a lighter bar and a better suited motor with the speed controller combo, we're hoping to get that down to two seconds, whereas previously our spin up time was between six and seven seconds. So significantly faster with about the same amount of energy as our old spinners. With our BattleBot, it's AI driven. That's that's our big thing. So in order to accomplish that, we have our big drive station computer that will orchestrate all of it. We have a camera mounted outside the arena, kind of facing down that the computer can read from and then do all the processing to make all the decisions that our BattleBot needs to make. Then we can take that and feed that into the driving algorithms, which is our orbit mode and our kill mode. Yeah, so orbit mode is our avoiding mode is what we call it. In this mode, the the robot will circle the opponent at a defined radius that the driver can shrink and grow. So in the event that I kind of want to get close to him, I can pull back on this trigger and shrink the circle. And in the event that um, this array gets too close, then I might want to increase this radius and now I'm safer. So the second mode is the kill mode. And to do this, I press a button on my gamepad and Orbitron will automatically attack the opponent. Before, Orbitron was basically a remote control car from a very intelligent computer. The problem with that is that you might have radio packet interruptions and it's slower. So this time we've moved a lot of the logic of orbit mode to happen locally on the robot. The AI runs at around a thousand times a second. And that means that it can do things that humans just simply can't. The biggest advantage is just reaction time. It's we can take some of the mental load off of Steven of kind of trying to manage all of it and he can focus on more low-level tasks like, hey, this is when I want to attack, this is when I want to avoid, and letting him make those more simple decisions a lot quicker. And all the driving decisions are happening on the computer. Now, if you want to see this AI in action and you can't wait to see our next fight, consider becoming a YouTube member. You'll get access to the fight right now and a bunch of other cool content when you become a member. There's lights in the middle that flash blue when you power up a new controller. So that way you don't have to talk to Peter about it every single time. Just look at the light flashing and then you're happy. Hey Peter, do we have right drive? The light didn't flash. So that way you don't have to talk to Peter about it every single time. And then you're happy. The light didn't flash. We need to make sure that our new weapon design and all the other modifications we made are gonna handle all the impacts we're gonna put it through. So we're gonna hit some Nice heavy things working up from a 30 pound weight plate all the way to a 250 pound engine block. And I think she's done her last load, bud. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Holy How much bite did you think we're going to get? Like that, that went up and then in. Like, it here, pulled Jeff, you the washing see. machine into itself. It got in that deep. Wow. We just need to swap out our Max Amps batteries so we can get back to testing. Oh. So hit this guy. So we transferred as much energy as we could into this thing. It couldn't take any more.
250 pound engine made out of the real materials that an actual bottle would be. Nice high carbon steel, lots of aluminum, brackets, plates, wires, basically a battle bot. That's hot. Holy crap, that's hot. <laughs> that is a missing chunk of high carbon steel that I took right out and tossed this thing like five feet in the air. So that's a win. You shut off the program. It's completely gone. The robot's not broken. We had no radio issues. We found out it's maintainable. We changed the battery in pretty good time, and we didn't break it. The spinner teeth are going to work. We know they held up. It appears that kind of from here, we got to get the robots in the crate and head out to Vegas. Well, Orbitron is on its way to Vegas. It's truly out of my hands now, but I'm pretty confident we're going to win this time. We'll have the full fight video out next week, but if you want to become a YouTube member of our channel, we'll have the raw fight upload as soon as possible. And if you want to help support the team and help us keep doing BattleBots, we've got some awesome new products at Hacksmith.store. First up, this 1-6 scale DIY Orbitron that you can build yourself, complete with real bearings and metal spinners. Or we've got this 1-20th scale version that you can buy from us or 3D print for free. Finally, we've got limited edition team jerseys, one-on-one -on -one video calls with the team so you can chat about everything BattleBots, and all proceeds go towards supporting Orbitron. And the best part is, you can get 20% off these new products if you use the YouTube shopping buttons on this video. Limited time only, while supplies last, and the discount is automatically applied at checkout. I'll see you next week with, hopefully, a champion BattleBot.